This home has a really nice fireplace mantle already, but the new homeowners have ordered a custom mantle and these columns are part of that. Look how pretty this is. You can see the intricate wood carvings and this gives it a real elegant look. So once we get it installed and stained, it will complement their decor and add beauty to their living room. So today, it's out with the old and in with the new. If you have caulking behind your mantle, what you need to do first is just take a utility knife and cut this away. And the reason that we're doing this is so that we don't damage the sheetrock by tearing off the paper. If we just started hammering away at this mantle without cutting this, then we'd have a big mess on our hands. So this is just a simple procedure and be sure you do this all the way around your mantle and even on the sides as well. And actually this really is cutting away very easy. We've discovered a little problem. In this existing column, they've made it hollow. They did this to hide the gas key, which I think is a really good idea. But the problem is with our new column. Since it's a solid piece, theoretically, we're not going to be able to use it here without rerouting this gas line. And that's really more expense than we want to get into. So I'll tell you what, later when we get to that piece, I'll show you a neat trick that we can do to use it here and still make it work. But for now, let's just get this piece out. This is my friend Ted. Because these mantles are so heavy, you will need help lifting this off and putting the new one back on. How's it looking, Ted? You got enough nails in it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's rock it back down and see if it comes loose. Here, it doesn't drop. There okay. Go. There. Move that. Okay, Ted, let's set this up there. See if it fits. Great, that does fit. It's just exactly the height that we need. But we still have the problem with this gas line being here for our fireplace key. And if you'll remember earlier, I told you I'd show you a neat trick we could do to make this column work. Since it is solid, the solution is hinges. We're using two hinges on this column. And what's really nice about these hinges is they're hidden hinges. So we're going to be installing them on the back of this column and that way you won't be able to see them. And what you want to do is just go ahead and measure in from each edge to make them even. So I'm going to mark this nine inches there. Let me measure this side at nine inches. And now I need to measure in seven eighths of an inch so that Ted will know where to drill for these hinges. So that's seven eighths. Okay, Ted, I've got it right here. Okay, and this hinge sits in there just like that. And that fits really nice. Okay, now let me just attach this hinge with these screws. And it's not necessary to hinge your other column because you don't need to open that one, just this one. Before we hang our column, we need some additional support that the sheetrock just can't give. So we found out where the studs are in the wall, and that's why I've cut these two holes. We pre-cut some one by sixes, and now we can attach this board to the two by four and attach our hinges to the board, and that's gonna give us the additional support that we need. I need to mark this board so that I'll know where to hang this hinge. And also, I need about three-fourths of an inch between the wall and the column to put a spacer board, so I'm just using my fingers to kind of give me a rough estimate. And it's okay when you're marking this, if when you go to hang this hinge, if it's not exactly on the mark, that's okay because another good thing about these hinges, they're adjustable. They'll move up or down or even back and forth if you need them to. Ted, we're ready to hang this column now. All right. We're gonna use this piece of cardboard for a shim on the bottom here. You have the clearance away from the wall and it'll give us enough room, but. We're going to have to have some room on the bottom so that it doesn't hit those boards when we swing this open. Here's your screws. We're using two inch screws to attach this hinge. Okay. 
That works great, Ted, but we're not finished yet. Because we needed to leave clearance between the column and the wall so that this column would open, we now have a big gap. So to fill that gap in, we've taken a four foot spacer board and cut it to 42 inches high. That's how high our column is. And now when we close this column, it'll look like it's flush up against the wall and it'll look better. Does it look pretty straight? Yeah. Yeah, it looks good. We also need to put a spacer board on the other side, so we've cut a notch out to fit over our hinge. So let me just line this up. Ted, I'm going to mark this so that when we attach that, it'll be right exactly where it needs to be. Okay, you can go ahead and open Keep it. Keep your iron to mark and I'll shoot it. Okay. Watch it. Watch um, your okay. Nope. Got it. Top. Good? Yeah. Even though we don't need to put hinges on our other column, we're still going to put some spacer boards on that other wall so that both of our columns will come out equal distance from the wall and they'll look good because they're balanced. Okay, let's put this up here. And. Is that, is that good at your end? Good here. Okay. I'm, unis I'm using this finishing nailer again to attach this mantle. And if you'll remember, there's a two by four back here, and that's what's anchoring this mantle. It may look like this is sitting right on top of this column, but this still opens nicely. So, we're getting close to the end, and we're almost ready to stain this. Put a couple down here in this leg right here. All right. Because this is unfinished wood, you can either paint it or stain it, and we're staining it. And it's also important to remember to get the right brush because they do make different brushes for paints or stains. And then staining up against the wall can be kind of tricky, but if you'll use this paint guide, that'll solve your problem. Even though our custom mantle was very labor intensive, it dramatically improved the appearance of this living room. And depending on which custom mantle you choose, you could spend anywhere from several hundred to several thousand dollars. But it will be well worth the investment. Mm -hmm.